Hello, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tech Exec Podcast, where we triple your impact per engineer. As always, I'm your host, Aviv Ben Yassef, advisor and consultant for tech execs worldwide. And our subject today is healthy innovation. And boy, am I happy to be back. It just feels good to sit down and record another episode for you all. I know that you don't really feel like I've been gone, but I had to record a bunch of episodes in advance for my Barcelona trip. And therefore, I haven't sat down and recorded an episode for a few weeks now, and I I honestly missed it. It's fun. So, Barcelona was... Well, it was intense. If you're on my newsletter, you already saw what I shared there about it. I'm probably going to be talking a bit more about it. But it was an intense trip. Three kids, 10 days, foreign city. Well, we created some memories, let's say that. Now, let's talk about the topic du jour, healthy innovation. And this is something that actually came up to me as I was there traveling in Barcelona. And every tapas restaurant we went to they have some sort of a pattern that you notice once you've been to enough and that is pretty much every menu has a part of the you know the must-haves the classics the traditional tapas dishes so you can see patatas bravas and uh, you know jalapenos and all sorts of different very very specific dishes again and again and again. I think I had garlic shrimp in like, I don't know, five places. But you do notice that they're not all the same, at least not the good places. And that is because for some places, what they do, they have the classics and the classics are done by tradition. And then they have their own new and unique tapas dishes you've never seen. So there's a tapa, one place where we had like, it was a souffle of green peppers. And that's like, who would have thought, right? But it was great. And it's not something you're going to see in any other restaurant. So there are those kinds of places where they had innovation when it comes to having new kinds of stuff. But there were also other places that had their own twist on the classics. So you had the patatas bravas done in a special way. Or they did the garlic shrimp a bit different than other places. And these are places that decided that they want to innovate on the classics. And I didn't see any restaurant that didn't have any of the classics. And I didn't see any restaurant that was innovative when it comes to every single dish. Now, good places had to choose. You cannot innovate everywhere. You cannot disrupt everything all the time. And this is something that I think that... When I say to you, it sounds straightforward, but we miss that. I always tell my clients that we have to choose where we're going to be innovating. Where does it make sense for you to disrupt? Because we cannot disrupt for disruption's sake, because that's just making a mess. And if you disrupt too much, your clients, and frankly, your own employees, will eventually get lost, because that's what too much disruption does. It's in the name. But healthy disruption. Healthy innovation is what we're after. And you have to choose strategically where are you going to invest in having new ideas and trying novel things and doing things differently. So you have to choose. You have your whole tapas menu and you have to choose which tapas dishes you're going to start playing with. So for example, I often tell my clients there are a bunch of places you can innovate. I'm not sure the place You want to innovate, the best investment you have is in org structure or in processes. Because frankly, I usually just say, you know, stick to something that's tried and true and innovate in the product. Innovate in how well your people create tech capital. Innovate in how you integrate technology with the rest of the company. Innovate in how product engineering work hand in hand. That's real innovation. That's something that actually matters. But if you just create new org structures, you try and have, I don't know, something that's worth of a medium post, but does it actually matter? You might as well have gone with anything else because let's say you maybe shaved an extra half a percentage point in efficacy throughout your organization. That's nice. 
but the cognitive load of managing something that's truly unique to your organization that every new employee that's onboarded has to learn is probably making this not worth it. So unless your disruption is so clearly worth it, don't do it. Healthy innovation means that you, you know, it's okay to try. And if you don't know if this new structure you're thinking is going to be really worth it, it's okay to have an experiment. Let's try it with two teams for two months, see what happens. Worst case scenario, you roll that back. Experiment by all means, but don't disrupt for the sake of disruption. Choose where you innovate. Invest your time mindfully of the fact that you cannot try too many things at the same time. So be aware of the opportunity cost here and innovate where it matters. Create a menu that's going to attract the right sort of clientele to your restaurant. I mean, maybe there's a place that really, you know, innovates every single dish, but I'm guessing that's not going to try and be a place where most tourists go to or something like that. Now as I'm talking, there was a place we went to in Madrid a few years ago, and that was the weirdest tapas place I've ever been to. You sit in a room that looks like Dexter's Kill Room, and every dish there was completely out there. And you know when you go there? You go there because every dish is great for Instagram. You don't go there because every dish is mind-bogglingly delicious. So... If that's the sort of innovation you're after, if that's your market differentiation, it makes sense. But only if that's your market differentiation. Only if you're doing this for the right cause. If you understand why you're innovating. Healthy innovation is about innovating where it matters, not about drowning in novelty. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't yet, do subscribe to my newsletter so you can read more about what it meant to be in Barcelona with my three adorable yet... <sighs> taxing kids. I also, I promise you, send their three exclusive insights relevant to you that I don't share anywhere else. And I reply to any mail I get there along with any comment you send to me. So if you have any questions or comments, my email is in the show notes. Thank you for joining me. It's been great to finally be back and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks.